So in this case, we saw that if we use the life cycle analysis for the nitrate and trianopy, it could reduce uh, nitrate could reduce up to 5% and 3NOP could reduce up to 12% of carbon footprint compared to the baseline where we don't have the, the, uh, the, any supplementation. Hi, I'm Bill Weiss, host of the Dairy Nutrition Black Belt Podcast. My guest today is Uden, or Dr. Uden. Uh, he got his BS from Bangladesh Agricultural University and his PhD from University of Madison, uh, Wisconsin at Madison. He's a fairly recent uh, new assistant professor at the University of Connecticut, specializing in ruminant nutrition, looking at life cycle analysis, sustainability, and efficiency in animal agriculture. Thank you so much. I'm glad to be here. I uh, appreciate the opportunity. Um, we're going to talk about a paper you co-authored a year or two ago on um, the impact of nitrate and an additive I'm just going to call NOP. You can define it if you want on the carbon footprint of dairy farms. And this paper involved what's called a life cycle analysis. And to start off with, what what is a life cycle analysis? How do you get that? Excellent. Um, again, thank you for the opportunity. So uh, the acronym LCA, as you pointed, is called the life cycle assessment or analysis. Basically, it is a tool that is used to determine the, the environmental footprint of a product or service or process, uh, taking into account the whole life of the product or, or process, starting from raw materials to the end of life. So for example, for dairy, we can say it is used to determine the carbon footprint or in some cases water footprint or eutrophication potential. So this would include crop production? Yeah, it could be used for um, crops or um, other um, products. So for any products, it starts from the, the beginning of the life to the end of the life. And, and basically, uh, you can tell from the carbon footprint what is the net emission coming from for that product uh, basically that's what it is about and is this typically put on like for dairy on a per milk basis per unit of milk or is it per farm or per cow or so that's a very good question excellent point uh, that is we call the the functional unit oftentimes you'll see um, the per unit of milk but it depends on, on purpose of your um, production systems as well. Like if you think about grazing system, often they say per acre of land or per farm as well. So, but typically it is used per unit of product. Okay. So that is, we often call the, the functional unit. Well, we'll get to the details here on nitrate and NOP, but in the big picture, what are the major sources of carbon footprint in, in the dairy industry or milk production? That is a very important point. So in the dairy, for the milk specifically, so if you think about carbon footprint, and and so we try to determine footprint for the whole value chains, right? So starting from the, uh, the cradle to the grape, which we call complete life cycle. But in most cases for the uh, the dairy we call the partial life cycle or incomplete life cycle who is stands from uh, the cradle to the farm gate because most of the emission comes from the farm in the case of dairy so which include the enteric methane or enteric fermentations manure management related emissions and feed production related emission these are the three main but we also include fossil fuel energy and other fossil fuel used in the farm to run electricity, uh, to run fans and like, equipment and things like that. So those are typically used in the, in the milk carbon footprint. And on your, your paper, you concentrate again on nitrate and NOP, which affects enteric methane mostly, I'm assuming. Um, what kind of effects do these really have on, on total carbon footprint for, to the farm gate anyway? So what we did in this study, we wanted to determine the, the impact of nitrate and 3NOP, which are typically studied at the animal scale to see their effect on enteric methane, right? And we know that nitrate can reduce up to 20% enteric methane and 
3NOP, which stands for 3 nitroxypropanol, has been shown consistently could reduce up to 30% methane. But you also have to understand that producing nitrate or 3NOP also requires energy and involves emission and transportation. Another important aspect is that if you feed those additives, right, it might have impact on other variables like increase or decrease productivity or uh, digestibility. So life cycle assessment account for those. So in this case, we saw that if we use the life cycle analysis for the nitrate and trianopy, it could reduce, uh, nitrate could reduce up to 5% and trianopy could reduce up to 12% of carbon footprint compared to the baseline where we don't have the, the, uh, the, any supplementation. One interesting aspect though, we did not see any the effect did not depend on regionality, so it across the region it was same. So that was very interesting. However, if you think about the baseline, who is buried or differ between region quite well, and even within the region between farms, there is a huge difference in terms of carbon footprint between farms because each farm is unique and has their own story for each farm. Can you just in case people haven't read your paper on regions, what what's your definition of a region here? Or define these regions. Sure, uh, that's an interesting idea. So we had the data from across the thirty seven state in the U S. So we divided into uh, different regionality based on management and and production. So basically, we tried to. Uh, put together the Midwest uh, in, in the one region. And in the north side, we put together the northern uh, part of the, the northwest, uh, east coast, and as well as southern part of the east coast. And when we talk about west, we put together the west and south separately because we saw that the diet and management quite varies depending on the, the, the farm size and other factors, including feed sources. And then across these different regions, you said the the additives didn't have an interaction with region. Right, that is that is quite true. But as I mentioned, but effect was the, the between region there was the footprint was very different. So that was very important to understand. And and do you think this difference is because of the the feed stuffs available in these regions, or do you think it's some something else? So one, of course, the feed stuff could be one factor. But other factors could be like uh, the management or efficiency of the animals between region could be different. Um, but also each farm was kind of an like unique aspect, right? Each region is unique, but within the region between farms, there is a variation too, because each farm has their unique way of doing things, right? Like some farms produce corn versus other farms like um, probably versus corn grain from other sources, right? So those are the factors contributed to um, different uh, footprint for each farm type. It doesn't have to be this hard to keep cows pregnant. At Virtus Nutrition, we understand the negative impact that lost pregnancies have on a dairy's economics. Every failed pregnancy means more money spent on expensive semen, additional replacements to raise, and fewer valuable beef calves to sell. Feed what embryos need. Strata with EPA DHA the pregnancy nutrient. Well, to, to wrap this up, what what do you think is real, with what we know now, how big of an impact or what, what kind of reduction in carbon footprint do you think is reasonable with the technology currently available? So it's really important to understand the net reduction. So we, we oftentimes talk about different technology, right? So feed additives is one of them. So we evaluate feed additive at the animal scale, looking into on, only enteric methane emission, which shows that it can reduce, uh, feed additive can reduce methane from 20 to up to 60%, for example, using seaweed. But what LCA can do or tell us is that what is the net reduction potential if you, if you take into account uh, all the trade-off interaction between um, sources of emission as well as other factors could be influenced by the supplementation of those videotapes. And it can tell you the true effect compared to the, the uh, taking into account trade-off and interactions that will not mislead us to, towards the future. Thanks a lot. This has, been, this has been interesting. Thanks for joining us. Thank you so much for having me.